JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for January the 21st. I am Harald Lambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar kept trading south against all but two of the other G10 currencies on Wednesday and during the Asian session Thursday. It lost the most ground versus uh, the Kiwi, the Canadian dollar, NOC and the US in that order, while it was found virtually unchanged versus uh, the Euro and the Swiss franc. The weakening of the US dollar and the Swiss franc, combined with the strengthening of the commodity-linked Kiwi, Luni and Aussie, suggests that markets continue trading in a risk-on fashion. Indeed, major EU and US indices were a sea of uh, green with the positive investor appetite rolling into the Asian session today. In Europe, the biggest winner was Italy's uh, food CMIB, gaining 0.93% after, Prime Minist after uh, uh, Italy's Prime Minister uh, Giuseppe Conte won a confidence vote in the upper house uh, Senate, allowing allowing him to remain in office after a junior part partner quit his coalition, thereby averting a government collapse. Optimism was boosted, was boosted even further during the US session with Wall Street's main indices hitting fresh record highs as Biden's inauguration proceeded smoothly with no new violent protests by Trump supporters. Remember, uh, yesterday we noted that there were some concerns on that front. Nasdaq was the biggest winner, adding 1.97%, with shares of Netflix shares uh, with shares of uh, Netflix surging 16.85% after the company said that it will no longer need to borrow billions of dollars to finance its uh, TV shows and movies. Now, yesterday, apart from uh, Biden's uh, inauguration, we also had a Bank of Canada monetary policy decision. The bank decided to keep interest rates and the pace of its QE purchases unchanged, disappointing those uh, expecting a small cut or even a re-increase in QE. Officials also noted that as the governing council gains confidence in the strength of the recovery, the pace of net purchases of government of uh, Canada bonds will be adjusted as required, which suggests that the next policy step for Bank of Canada may be tapering its QE. The result uh, was a stronger Canadian dollar, which we expect to stay supported, not only from a monetary policy front, but also helped by the broader market sentiment. Remember that our view is for risk appetite to stay supported in the first months of 2021, which means higher oil prices and thereby higher loony. Overnight, the central bank torch was uh, passed to the Bank of Japan, with the bank uh, keeping its monetary policy settings unchanged and revising up its economic uh, forecast for the next fiscal year. The bank also signaled that it has delivered uh, sufficient stimulus for now to cushion the blow from uh, the pandemic, but repeated that it will take additional steps without hesitation if deemed necessary. The yen did not react at the time of the release, confirming the notion that due to its safe haven status, it stays mostly linked to development surrounding the broader market sentiment. Our own view is for the yen to weaken in the foreseeable future, at least against the risk-linked currencies like uh, the likes of Aussie, Kiwi and Looney. As for today, the main event on the agenda may be the ECB monetary policy decision. At its last meeting for 2020, this bank decided to expand its pandemic emergency purchase program by 500 billion euros and extended the scheme by nine months to March 2022. That said, the euro gained on the decision as due to the currency's prior appreciation, many may have expected the bank to deliver more. 
currently the euro usd exchange rate is trading at about the same levels as back then having even hit much higher levels earlier in january which is negative for consumer prices after all president lagarde said that the press conference said at the press conference following the last decision that the appreciation of the euro exercise is downward pressure on prices and that they will monitor it very carefully Thus, with negative headline and very low core inflation rates, we see decent chances for the ECB to act again at some point soon. However, we don't expect this to happen at this gathering. Officials have just expanded their stimulative efforts in December, and they may prefer to wait and see the effects of their decision before they decide to act again. If indeed the ECB stands part, we will dig into the statement for clues as to whether indeed officials, officials are considering more easing, and if so, when it could be served. The euro may slide a bit more if the bank provides clear signals that uh, it's planning to expand its bond purchases in the months to come, while the opposite may be true if we don't get uh, any such uh, clues. Now, as for the rest of today's events, apart from the ECB decision, we also get the US building permits and housing starts, both for the month of December. Building permits are forecast to have declined somewhat to 1.604 million from 1.635 million, while housing starts are expected to have increased to 1.560 million from 1.547 million. Initial jobless claims for last week are also due to be released, and expectations are for a slight to 910,000 from 965,000. Tonight, during the Asian Morning Friday, New Zealand's CPI is forecast to have accelerated to 0.9% quarter over quarter in the fourth quarter from 0.7% in the third quarter, something that would drive the year-over-year -year rate up to 1.7% from 1.4%. Back in November, the RBNZ decided to keep its official cash rate and its large-scale asset purchase program unchanged, and although it noted that it will launch a funding for lending program in December, Governor Andrea Anor said that domestic activity since August has been more, resi more resilient uh, than uh, previously assumed. This combined with accelerating inflation is likely to diminish the chance for this bank to adopt uh, negative interest rates. Japan's uh, CPIs for December are also due to be released uh, tomorrow during the Asian morning. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. At this point, I must inform you that there will be no daily market review video tomorrow. So goodbye, have a great day, a great rest of the week, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT, just fair and direct.